Central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, also referred to as GovCoins, are digital currencies issued and backed by a federal government's central banks. These are clearly a centralized response to decentralized cryptocurrencies, and as such evoke mixed responses. Some claim CBDCs will be a great innovation, some claim they're an embarrassing fad, and others still claim they're a dangerous power overreach. Before we dive in, consider the feelings of the like, subscribe, and share buttons. And if you've got something interesting to add, say it in the comments along with your Femex UID, and the best three comments will get a $15 trading bonus on Femex. All right, so what are CBDCs? Government-issued digital currencies are digital versions of currencies such as the euro or the Chinese yuan. The proponents of CBDCs claim that they'll facilitate a faster, cheaper, and safer payment system. In some regards, CBDCs are similar to popular decentralized cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin or Dogecoin. However, unlike cryptocurrencies that are based on decentralization, CBDCs are centralized and regulated by the state. How do they work? CBDCs aim to adopt the blockchain technology first introduced by Bitcoin and use it to cut the global banking system's operational costs, increase transaction speed, and streamline settlements. CBDC users will be able to store their money in a digital wallet in the form of an app intended to resemble Apple Pay or PayPal. As such, users will no longer need bank accounts with commercial banks. Every transaction will go directly through the central bank, making the banking process simple and convenient potentially even for cross-border transactions. Through this new payment method, governments could greatly increase control by monitoring every payment and even the entire transaction history of individuals. Depending on the method selected to implement CBDCs, they may dramatically increase the power of central banks while undermining commercial banks. Proponents see this as a bonus, claiming that the government is a more secure handler of money than commercial banks. So why pursue CBDCs? One reason why governments and central banks create their own digital currencies is that many feel challenged by the fast decline of cash and the increasing adoption of decentralized cryptocurrency. In particular, governments are concerned by long-standing companies entering the crypto space, such as Visa, MasterCard, or Facebook. The classic government arguments against anonymous transaction methods are that they could facilitate illegal activities and undermine the financial system. Central banks argue that by reducing global banking costs, CBDCs would create a more inclusive banking system than most countries currently operate with, potentially giving the 1.7 billion people currently without a bank account worldwide equal access to easy transactions. Unlike credit cards, CBDCs could involve no transaction fees and offer affordable loans and other financial perks. Governments that eventually go completely cashless would not need to print or store any more banknotes, which would reduce waste and help the environment. With the use of CBDCs, governments could also have the power to transform monetary policy. In contrast to current tools such as interest rates, e-accounts would give central banks more precise control over systemic risks and money supply, enabling them to nudge economic behavior. In China's recent trial, the e yuan were programmed with an expiry date to encourage direct spending. So which governments are pursuing CBDCs? A survey conducted by the Bank for International Settlements, the so-called Central Bank of Central Banks, suggests that CBDC projects are supported by nearly 90% of central banks, and this percentage is steadily growing. So China is the indisputable leader when it comes to the implementation of CBDCs. They're the only major economy that has already launched live trials, with over 500,000 people already having received small amounts of the EUN. The trial participants downloaded an app and presented a QR code to utilize these digital funds as certain outlets. Several emerging markets are more advanced in their research than developing markets and industrial nations. The Bahamas, having launched the sand dollar in late 2019, and Cambodia, having launched the Bekong in 2020, are among the pioneering nations. However, neither the US nor the five biggest European economies, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, and the UK, have made considerable progress. Among all European countries, Sweden has conducted the most research. The nation is planning to start widespread use of the e-krona as soon as 2023. The European Union is planning to launch the e-euro two years later. 
All right, so the big question is, what's the concern over CBDCs? With the implementation of CBDCs, an immense amount of power over the financial system and citizens would be shifted to the state, making finance more centralized than ever before. Many experts also have significant concerns about data privacy, since every user's entire financial history would be known to the state. Suspicious accounts could be shut down in an instant, which could mitigate criminal behavior, but also overstep personal boundaries. Commercial banks are concerned because CBDCs could pose a major threat to their existence. Many people could decide to use their central bank's cheaper and safer service instead of a commercial bank's. With a reduction of bank deposits, the financial system would change significantly. For example, retail banks would have less access to funding for investment in mortgages and the economy. Eventually, banks could run out of funding, potentially leaving credit distribution up to bureaucratic influence. In a worst case scenario, bank runs could emerge, leading to the collapse of retail banks. And another concern, especially among crypto investors, is the effect of CBDCs on the crypto market. While the potential benefits of CBDCs may draw some people in, data privacy and over-centralization concerns may also encourage a preference for decentralized cryptocurrencies. On this front, the cryptocurrencies most threatened by CBDCs would be those that operate only in the digital payment field, such as stable coins like USDT and XRP. On the whole, there's clearly innovation leaps and bounds beyond simple digital dollars going on in crypto, which, from a purely free market perspective, makes CBDCs unlikely to have much of a negative influence in the space. They could even make the process of buying and selling crypto quicker and easier. Therefore, the question of whether the outcome for cryptocurrencies would be positive, negative, or neutral mostly depends on governmental regulations. So let's end with a quote from Professor Randall Krosner from the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. A digital currency revolution could go in two directions, either a triumph of decentralization and market forces or a triumph of centralization and government monitoring. So CBDCs are a big topic. It's a new thing going on right now, and there's a lot of development to be made. So it's worth keeping an eye on and see what the future holds. All right, thanks for watching this video. See you next time. Looking for more ways to earn? Deposit your Bitcoin on Femex and get rewarded with up to $2,000. Follow the URL in the description of this video for more details.